How do everyone? Welcome to the Potty Mouth Special. Yes, Flower Special. We have got the full band back together again. Yes, and there's, there's some amateurs on this show today as well. And I'll stick my hand up. And I think that fella there is it? Yes, there's a few <laughs> amateurs on this show today, and there's a few professionals. Well, I've got it sorted. So all the professionals are on the bottom. So. <laughs> Audrey, I'm looking at you as like the main, you know, our main leader in this. You know, you you started this. You, it's it's all down <laughs> to you. You you picked Windy Gear with flowers this year. So okay, how, how are you doing? Are you good? I'm doing great. Thank you. It's looking forward. It's I'm, early here. I'm not an early bird. I'm no, a, a night owl. No. So you know, that's well, how I'm, committed I'm, I am to flowers. I you know, I appreciate you. Yes, appreciate you coming on. <laughs> Soph, nice to have you. Yes, and you're another big flower instigator as well. So, and yes. Soph, what I would like to what I would like to do with you, Sophie, is if you don't mind anything we talk about, or you've got a list, I would would like a list so we can have a list, and I'll stick it in the Discord. So any plants that or flowers that we're talking about, people like there's a little record. If you come to Discord, there's a link in the description to join Discord. I'm not going to explain what Discord is, but it's a great little place for all gardeners. <laughs> but we'll get so to comp compiling lists. So we'll get oh look at there's a pens there already, man. You know what I mean? So <laughs> all we'll, right. We'll get uh, we'll get Sophie to kind of write everything we're doing because honestly, it's like it's all new to me. And if I've got like a little list where oh I'll buy some of them seeds, some of them. So would you be kind enough to do that, so if That would be fantastic. Absolutely. I'm on it. Jesse, another professional flower grower there. And I see, I'm presuming they are your own cut daffodils there. They're certainly not, they don't look like a Morrison's one pound bunch. I'm hoping not anyways, you know what I mean? So They're not, they're not mine. They're not mine. <laughs> They're they're bought. I, know. A... I couldn't if they came out this early. There's no way I would have the the oomph to cut them. I'd just be so excited about them being out. Well, they wouldn't be in a vase. Jess, it's it's the effort. It's the effort you've made. None none of us. I mean, JB's area there is looking not flowery at all. Do you know what I mean? Those... I've got a... Those chilies will flower one day. One so. day. <laughs> one day. <laughs> that counts. Jimmy, so we to have you on as well. And Jimmy, I'm guessing you're exactly honestly. It's like I'm so well out of my depth. I can, you know, I planted Cosmo, and I forget what Asta. I think it might have been Audrey that I planted last year. That's Linea. my, that's my right, right. So I've got that wrong. Doesn't you know, even know. So <laughs> if I go quiet or JB goes quiet, we're going to look towards Mark because I think Mark, I would all Goodness. the way here. Is the top <laughs> flower grower, you know? I don't, I don't, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not convinced no. myself. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, actually, Mark, you did say, which was a great point, that you're interested in like companion planting flowers. Yeah, you've got yes. flowers in your mm -hmm. in your garden home. Yeah, but you you know, I mean, the kind of, and that's a great thing, and lovely for your plot to look like you know and to have flowers. So that's I never even thought of that, Mark. So. Yeah, what well, ones that are, ones that are beneficial to the crops that I'm growing. So I've got, mm -hmm. I do have a list prepared because I, I, I told myself, I think I told myself this like 2021 that I was going to learn for 2022 about companion planting and flowers, and I never did. I learned the marigolds were good, and that was about it. But this <laughs> this year, I've put a little bit more effort in, and I've got myself an actual list of 11 flowers or plants that I'm going to grow and have them around the plot to do certain jobs with certain other crops, and they're going to be Spot on. So is it is it marigolds nice. and tajits? Is that it? It's <laughs> about as far as yeah, it's just eleven one, different varieties of them. One more level up. <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean, <laughs> <laughs> my dear, I did the, the the kind of the marigolds and all that and tajits in there, and I guess I mean now I've got the kind of membrane in in the polytunnel, but the self seen was just mm. fantastic mm. with them things. Do you know what I mean? Like the amount. You know, and even when you buy the seeds, them you get a ton in. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. so Audrey, where, if we if someone's wanting to do flowers in a garden, let's say I'm not saying like an allotment, but you know, anywhere, mm -hmm. where do we honestly? Where do we start? Like, what's an easy one to grow? An easy one to grow. Yeah, let's see. Let's start with that one. Okay, eh? what I sent you was like I think one of the easiest ones to grow is a zinnia. And I only got they a grow, couple. <laughs> they go big. There's lots of color choices. They're very, uh, they just keep producing. Uh, if you cut them, they keep getting more. 
Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, that's just, to me, that's one of the diehard followers for the garden. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And there's, uh, you know, like, as a broad spectrum then, uh, flowers, do we have to kind of have heat, like chilies kick them off with heat first, or can we? No. I mean, sometimes, I think heat helps anything, kind of, unless it's Nebraska, they kind of like it cooler, maybe. But um, if it's a summer flower, sure, heat will always help. Mm -hmm. But you don't have to. It's just, it helps them along a wee bit if you want it, but they'll be mm -hmm. fine without that. So, zin, is it, so if make a, make a note, Zinya, you know what I mean? Number one, Zinya. Just... <laughs> good. good I choice. just think it's it's kind of foolproof, that one. Right. Mm -hmm. One thing zinnia's I will say about Zinya is, oh, sorry, go, Jesse. No, no, you go. No, <laughs> I was going to say, one thing I will say about Zinya's and something that I'm being really quite careful about this year is they do not like being transplanted at all. They will silk, sulk and just die instantly. Um, so some of those seed cell trays that you guys have got where just kind of pop open, um, I think if you're doing zinnias, that would probably be the ideal solution for them, if not soil blocking. Um, so you can just plop them straight in the ground without disturbing them, but they hate it. Absolutely. I lost so many last time I tried to move them around. Um, so, yeah, just just a word of warning. <laughs> oh, Okay. I wouldn't, That's... I wouldn't have known that to be honest, so if... no. Yeah, I'm kind of brutal with mine. I'm surprised. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's one of the big things I've noticed about flowers is the back of the majority of seed packets I found say that they're going to prefer direct sowing, and I find when you get to May, uh, that can be really tricky because you have got to direct sow into a weedy bed, and if you if you clear the weeds, um, you know the weeds quite often are going to grow faster than the, the flower seed. So um, does anyone have any like methods to get around the the weed issue in direct sowing if you can't transplant something? Do you just do you just let it go, let nature well, take its course? I like, I think it works really well with the things that you sow in late summer to flower the next year because you can mm. like clear the weeds and things aren't growing quite so quickly and they can really establish like i found that way of sowing like things like the cornflowers and stuff works so well the late the late summer sowing uh, rather than starting i never find with those that's like um where are they oh i've lost them Never mind. I did have some here to, to show. Oh, no, there they are. Like the black ball ones, you know, the really, really dark ones. Mm -hmm. When these, like with so many of the flowers we're talking about, like the calendula and stuff, when it when they re-sow and the tagetes, it's like uh, if they get their head start really, really super early or the year before, they just grow brilliantly. Like with the lickness is the same if it's the year before, like from the early, early flower seed. They're just so strong. It's like a carpet. It's brilliant. Okay. Never had any luck sowing them in the spring, though. Even though it says you can. So, Jess, are you putting them in rows in late summer? A patch, basically. It's like um, the the bit of our big asparagus bed that um, that some of them are really, really strong, going in like an L shape, and then I've got this patch where the two the two crowns in there aren't doing so well. Um, and I've basically given up on them. So I've got this like open ground bit of patch, which is kept completely weed free because of the rest of the asparagus. So like you were saying, where it's really difficult to sow at that time of year because the ground is just like everything's already up. Um, or you have to whip out anything that you that's kind of self seeded in there as well, which is always a pain. But um, if you're doing it like late summer and then an asparagus bed is a really good spot because you're like, on it all the time. Weed wise, not on it, like walking on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Hmm. Do you be any more thoughts or not, or before you kind of? Get I just um yeah the um the the other one of the I'm just talking about reasons I don't like flowers, which isn't the aim, but uh, we'll get it out of the way. First. The other thing um that I've always found really tricky is um biennials, so the ones that you're talking about that you sow the year before to flower mm -hmm. later. Um, because this is the time of year where I start thinking about flowers. Um. Jess, my fiance, is starting to get much more on top on top of it with flowers, but she's still the same. You know, it gets to January, February. We're starting to get the the propagators out, the lights, the heat mats for the chilies. We think, oh, what flowers can we do? It's like, oh, we should have done them all in August already. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's some the flower of the nicest, season. Yeah, some of the nicest biennials. 
Um, you have to start a little bit earlier, which I always just, you know, forget about. You know, that's like mm. tomatoes mm. and chilies, like harvests and all that kind of thing. And you've got to switch on your flower brain a little bit earlier. So, um, yeah, yeah, maybe um, the the list, so we might have to be a bit more annuals focused or, you know, ones that we can start February, March and then yeah. try and I remind mean... everyone. We've got to do another flower <laughs> special in like August, September. So are these Cause... flowers, Jess, are these flowers, you know, once you saw them and that, can you, let's say, I don't know, November, can you see an actual plant there in your soil? Or oh. are we waiting for, like, say, this year for it actually to germinate? No, so it's more like, so if the flowers are going to flower in, like, July, for example, the first of those flowers go over, dry off, drop their seed, and that's the sowing of them for the following mm. year. So they've sown the ground, and then you, oh. so that's the time that they would normally, and they start off and they get to sort of this sort of size, and then they just sit there over winter, right, doing nothing. But then by the time the spring comes along, they're these absolutely beefy mammoth plants. It's like the time that the flower would naturally throw its seed on the ground. Like it, that, uh, they've always been the strongest, the strongest cornflowers for me. Like I, if I sow them in the spring or whatever, and then I get these kind of odd weedy ones come up. If I just leave them be, it's like the next year that you get the really good, the good whack of them. It's already getting like advanced level for but you know what I mean? Like, it's exactly it? what JB said there. It's just like, oh, you know, you, you oh, too much to think about. Yeah, it's like, it in terms just... of like that sort of like having a having a sort of seed bed of them, it's like things like nasturtiums or the calendula or the tagetes or something. Mm -hmm. If you just like decide to leave a patch and let them all go, they'll all come up like either like late winter, really really early spring, and then you can just tease them apart and dot them across the rest of the allotment. Like you could just do kind of like you know transferring. I do that with the nasturtiums because the them in um fruit cages at, like comes up like grass basically there's so many of them in there so that's an just dot them out everyone the stations are great because you can't mistake them for anything else mm -hmm. that's very You're true, not just yeah. transplanting weeds which i have done a number of times <laughs> <laughs> mark any thoughts well just on the nasturtiums there that jesse was talking about i think was uh they're they're on my list to grow this year because apparently slugs snails and aphids think they're like the best thing ever it's like the greatest dinner they could ever possibly have so grow loads and loads and loads of nasturtions everywhere everything else around and about it just gets ignored whereas your nasturtions they'll get absolutely hammered you know stuff will come along and eat it left right and center but all your stuff that's going around and about it doesn't get touched allegedly it, everything well, comes with a disclaimer <laughs> Jessie's yeah. looking like <laughs> she's got an opinion. So you're <laughs> sacrificing flowers. Sacrificial plants, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Sacrificial I, I see. Yeah. I've heard uh, that, Mark, cool. though. I've, I've heard that, and like for caterpillars as well. And I've had like mm. nasturtiums grown in compost bins covered in caterpillars. Do uh -huh. you know what I mean? And it's all oh, right, yeah, yeah nice. Sacrificial, yeah. Like the, the um, lavender was another one I was thinking about doing this year because apparently, because it's meant for caterpillars, apparently, lavender. Um, keeps the butterflies away. It's like cabbage whites and things like that. So if you mm -hmm. go to lavender near where you've got your brassicas, apparently it's a natural deterrent for butterflies. Oh, allegedly. Cool. Mm. So are you, with lavender, though, you're talking about like a bush that's it's going to be turned into a bush. So I yeah, guess you've I guess got to keep, keep it. Keep on top of it. Yeah, you uh -huh. have to keep control of it. But I think isn't lavender one of those things you'll get your email from, you know, Sutton's or whatever, buy 10,000 lavender plants for like, Nine ninety nine, mm -hmm. and they'll send them all out. Uh, yeah. So yeah, maybe they sort of grow them at the edge of the plot or something like that. Because my where my beds come up to the edge of the fence, I've got a gap probably like that big, and it's just perfect to start putting different plants in it at the end of it, and so, something like that. They might just sort of keep the butterflies away or whatever. Maybe oh, that's just a, the job. That's it. That's a because it there is them gaps yeah. after Rhea's bed, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Next to a fence, there's always that little right. bit. Yeah, I mean, mine. I've never seen. Jess was agreeing with you. I've never seen Sutton send out like a hundred. Uh, I have seen lavender plants for like twenty pound. And... But the lavender plants are like this big, tiny. Right. They oh, right. come in like row, like plug rows of right. absolutely tiny, like tiny, tiny, like cuttings or or just really small plants. And you do have to grow them on. Right. But... 
But you can get a thousand of them for ten bucks. No, no, I was maybe just being a little bit flippant. A little bit flippant. (laughs) Oh, dude, that was just just a a Scottish sense. I'm like, wow, I need to move immediately. You you might get like ten or something, perhaps. (laughs) Okay, because here it's like they're twenty bucks a plant. So, yeah, wow. No, I'm not already No, go on, Jess. No, I was just gonna say, yeah, if you go out and buy one that's like established in a pot, it'd be yeah, like about twelve quid or something. But um No, I I play I pay that for plug pants here. If I order plugs of lavender, they're not cheap. Maybe mm-hmm. we should start a new business, growing lavender from seed. I think we're <laughs> yeah. onto something. I yeah. think oh, wow. I got I got a, a lavender plant from a garden centre, twenty odd pound. Honestly, a nice big, you know, a nice size one. Didn't right. last, you know, it got killed in the in the one of the freezers over winter, and it was just like, yeah, mm. okay, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, mm. so notes, have, um, notes, make notes. Notes, <laughs> lavender. I have another one to add to that. Then, um, when I first started growing stuff, and I had it all in my shed, one plant which was really strange. It's not wor- wormwood, woodworm, the am- absinthe one. It's like the cola plant. I think that's what it is. And it's a beautiful smell, really strange. Um, but I had that growing sporadically in little pots all around my shed. And anywhere that they were around or surrounding, aphids weren't near it. Like the same plants aphids were landing on somewhere else, wherever this little herb was, they wouldn't go near it. Um, so I want to trial some of that this year because it's the only companion plant I've seen so far that's been effective um, with aphids. So don't know whether it will well, still be true, but... Um, just trying that I believe it is I can I will sort of send it around in the list we make but I'm pretty sure it's wormwood I'm not sure one wormwood or woodworm either either way um, Artemisia so really cool. absinthium as that's in the, the main that's... ingredient in absinthe or the main flavor yes yeah that's the one it's got a yeah. crazy list of um you know benefits and uses yeah Interesting. What's it look like, Sophie? What describe it? Beautiful. It's kind of like wispy and silvery. Um, it gets it's more of like a bush. I think it gets like yay tall. Um, but yeah, quite nice. Again, if you wanted to use that in flower arrangements as well, great, great herb to put in. <laughs> but yeah, it's just really whispery, wispy. JB, have you got any advice for me? Because I think sometimes I've, I've shot myself in the foot <laughs> on umpteen occasions where my polytunnel now is it's quad grew heaven what would you suggest then for maybe putting plants in do i just a nice um it's not really a flower i you can sneak uh, i've had some mixed experiences trying to sneak marigolds and other plant other flowering plants into the actual kind of quad grow pots but you can do it i've had some marigolds that have survived so you can still have um a nice little understory with your right. with your self-watering planters one that works really well with the tomatoes is basil technically flowering <laughs> but um yeah you can definitely g- give it a go trying to um get some stuff established either i think my ones didn't succeed very well because i left them too long before transplanting them in um i've never sewn stuff onto a quad grow pot um might work quite quite well mm-hmm. you know it can access that water quite readily you know it comes up quite high in the pot so it's not like their roots or dry off or anything like that but you can definitely experiment with some some multi-cropping in a quad grow mm-hmm. pot well, I, never, I never thought of actually putting it you know like some mm-hmm. you know tajits in it like oh if just one plant you know what i mean i wouldn't want to kind of take up loads and start yeah. you know what i mean but maybe just one plant because the fair grow do you know what i mean but i like that idea mind you of putting like a, a basil little basil plant in each one that you works so well yeah just the smell it's worth it for the I smell alone even smell. if you don't get a harvest we haven't met. I just what wonder if anyone's got a bet on in the, you know, watching the live stream. Chili, chili, chili. There. What? How many minutes was that? <laughs> like 27 minutes. We're late this time. You know I mean? did it already. <laughs> oh, you talking about it? Yeah, yeah. Did, yeah. it was brief. It was a brief one. <laughs> anything? We Jeff, should just go around, the, go around Sorry. the list. Take it in turns with your lists. Who's next? <laughs> I haven't got a list. I was going to say, I was just going to add one extra thing to the to the nasturtiums. I've I've never found them very good at deterring slugs and snails because their leaves hold a lot of moisture underneath. So although you get you find a lot of slugs and snails underneath them, That's they're true. not really eating the nasturtiums. Mm. They're just providing a beautiful, beautiful place for them to live, and then they creep out and eat everything else and come back. Mm. 
But what they did, what they are really good for aphids. And the other one that I found was really good is that they're great for growing, if you've got red ones, to grow amongst strawberries because it confuses whoever's going for your strawberries and they don't just see the see the fruit. Or that's what it seemed to me. I had them just self-seeded ones. Mm. I had orange at one end or like a yellowy colour one kind of came up at one end. And then I had these really beautiful dark red ones which grew up around one section of the strawberries. And I got all the fruit from those strawberries. Like the ones at the yellow end. All yes, the strawberries that, can, that cannot be right. Shoot, but I colorblind, colorblind. Uh, I mean, oh. to be fair, it could have been my my like plot neighbour or something. You know, he might have been going in there looking for the strawberries. But I didn't, like the red ones, they really <laughs> did like just hide the, hide right. the strawberries. Because well, the smell birds, of them so it? strong as well. I've never had, funny enough, I've never out all, you know, I've grown, I've, they've, they've come into the plot somewhere in Nasturtia, but I've never had the red ones. I know exactly which ones. They're a lovely deep red, but I've never. Stunning. Yeah. I grow, I like throwing, because they self seed so well. What am I looking for? Uh, self seed so well. I like throwing an, a, a proper variety every year, and then they like interbreed with the ones you get. So then you get these mad splash colours the next year. And this year I've got Purple Emperor, which is a pink one. Can you see that? Great name. Not really. Great name. Uh, and then there's Rumba Mix, which is like a red and an apricot. Mm. And mm. then I've got Black Velvet, That's which beautiful. is that really, really dark red one. So I'm just going to chuck them down in the in the um, fruit cage and let Do them come up and then move them on. Jess, do you never get a little bit, because I, I do get, you know what I mean, like a little bit kind of anxious when things are starting to take over. Do you know what I mean? And the stirs, they can grow like, do you just let things just go wild? You know, back and back, if you, yeah. Mm -hmm. like, I get a bit kind of, yes. you know what I mean? It's like, I like it neat and, you know what I mean? <laughs> neat, not neat, orderly. Yeah, Nasturtium's probably not your best mate if <laughs> if you don't like the neat. Like maybe stick with the Tajitis. <laughs> nice straight row, you know what I mean? No, I'll put them in my compost bin. Do you know what I mean? So, uh... <laughs> or did you grow in this? Nasturtiums over there, then can I do? do is that what they're called over there? Are they? Are we still? They are called. Oh, I was going to ask what a tajit is a because bit. I, that's not a, a word I know. Tajitis are French marigolds. Oh, so they're just smaller. Hmm. They're quite the stronger smelling. Uh, do you think, or it's a different plant? Yeah, to, you've got calendula and tajitis. Yeah. They're the two, two marigold. Or they're, 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 like their common name is marigold, French marigold, and normal marigold. Oh, so look, for you, a uh, calendula is a marigold. A pot marigold. A pot yeah. marigold. Okay. Okay. I was. I always <laughs> think of um, tajitis as the mini ones, but it's not. That's yeah, um, little ones. They are so cute. Uh, Signet <laughs> marigold is uh, yeah, the so one for those. Nice. The mini okay. tajitis of. I like they're so cute. I think that's what you had in your tunnel, actually, Tony. Right. The mini ones. I kind of um I know mm. I got the, the seeds from um, yes, he is di direct. You know, I just I just ordered, you know, I just kind of put in the search engine marigold, you know, Tajits and Marigolds. And that's what what's mm -hmm. that ones, Mark? They're marigolds from Premier Seeds Direct. Oh, that's probably they also right. say they're mm. Tajitis on the on the packet. So two packets both saying the same thing. And you get how many seeds do you get in there, Mark? What, what? Oh, there's blooming. How many seeds? There's blooming millions of them. Uh, they uh, might not look yeah. it, and there's they're a weird seed-looking thing, aren't they? Do you know what I mean? They're uh... two different colours, aren't they? They're, they're quite long, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, JB, what are you wanting out of this kind of? We'll call it a flower experiment for the top row. You know what I mean? What 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 do you want out of it? I like the idea of having ten ten new. Flowers. I'm gonna try, or not necessarily new, but ten. I'm definitely gonna stick to trying to grow on the allotment this year, because um, mm. I know I normally do a few, um, and every year I have a, a few more. I've got some rudbeckia, some verbena. I really love, and I'm quite lax. We, I just go with the polyculture. Just chuck them in the bed. A little bit of flowers mm. growing in amongst the veg. I oh. think it's quite nice. Um, yeah, <laughs> I always have loads of calendula because they're so easy. The the pot marigold just go and they they self-seed they just turn into a carpet mm -hmm. so down my main mm -hmm. kind of walkway down to the polytunnel i always just have a row of calendula either side and it's just ah oh, love it um they're really early as well you know you get that first little explosion of color um i think that's about it for what i normally do um so i like the idea of having 10 that i'm gonna try this year 
And um, we've got to talk about dahlias or dahlias as well, aren't we? So yes. they're like so's favorite. <laughs> and I was thinking as well, like when I think about flowers that I've seen on allotments in particular, is dahlias. Like dahlias mm-hmm. and marigolds are pretty much, if you walk around most allotment sites, they might be the only mm. two that you see. You see most common. Mm. I think something that'd be really interesting for if people did want to sort of dabble in dahlias outside of buying the tubers and doing all that, um, a thing with dahlias is when you buy the tuber, they're standard to the colour that you see and they won't they won't differ- differentiate from that. But if you sow the seeds, you kind of like you get anything. You don't know really mm. what you're going to get. So it might be fun that everyone tries a different dahlia seed <laughs> and then we can all see what we get. Oh, I that's thought. cute. So- you might get a different sport of something and then you can have your own sort of variety of dahlia so that's one thing i'm going to do this year anyway i'm going to sort of mess around with some dahlia seeds as well as tubers so will 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 if i sow a seed so will it come to this year for a flower yeah it should do yeah should do. yeah yeah you won't get much of a tuber maybe by the end of the year you might get a teeny tiny tuber that you'd have to protect if you wanted to carry on that same mm-hmm. variety of dahlia that you've grown um but i think i did it the first year i started growing and i got a flower out of mine so we, you, you have to, am I right, again, naive, but I'll ask the question. You've got to dig up the tubers and dry them over winter? Is this you, the... You can, you can, you don't have to. It depends on your growing situation. If you've got enough of a material that you can mulch, heavily mulch your ground and make sure it's protected from frost, then you absolutely don't have to. Um, but if you are a little bit worried about sort of, you think your ground's going to freeze over quite harshly, absolutely dig them up. Um, I did this year, but I don't think I'll do that next year because it is quite a laborious task. And then you have to sort of baby them until it's time now to start waking them up again. And in between that time, they could go mouldy. Um, they could just just rot away and you've got to then have all that space for storing them. I just wouldn't do it again. <laughs> just leave them next time and just mm-hmm. heavily mulch. Well, that's yeah. it. Funny, funny enough, I was, I've just been using some like horse bedding on my yeah. on the you know what I mean so you could um, probably love that. do that uh-huh. mm-hmm. yeah, I know cool. my mum used to grow dahlias do you know what I mean and I remember anyone remember Steve's video he, he bought some and they were yes. like the worst like I know he was starting mad when he was kind of <laughs> in his video I always remember him throwing them back in his little tub do you know what I mean and he wasn't happy with the <laughs> And that's a good, good one, I guess, as well. One reason for me to do it, you know, what I mean, he would, Steve was right into the flowers as much as, you know, what I mean, mm-hmm. and it, I never got it. Do you know what I mean? So I'm hoping, you know, that our three professionals on the bottom here can, you know, inspire her. Help. You know what I mean? <laughs> Audrey, how how else are you going to inspire us? us well, to- I was going to ask you if you want to do perennials or annuals, mm-hmm. because. You know, if you do perennials, you plant them once and you can leave them there, but they don't give you that that real blast of color that you get from an annual. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. the uh, to me. That's the beauty of the annuals. They're just the colors are incredible. Um, so, have you never grown like a snapdragon? Yeah. Okay. No. On my list that's year. one for you. Yeah, that's one oh. for you to try, Tony. They're hilarious. They're the best, <laughs> and they're beautiful, and they talk. You can. You I'm know, sure I heard like I, from this flower. bottom row. I'm sure I heard gasps there when I went. No. <gasps> <laughs> well, Gabe, have you grown any snapdragons? Yeah. Well, oh. no. I've bought. I've bought plugs. I've never grown one from seed, but there are some. There are some on there, but they're Jess's. They're not mine. I can't take credit. Um, but we have started some in a in a tray under what, the grey light. What does mm-hmm. it What does it look like then, Audrey? A snapdragon. Well, it's it's a tall, um, spiky. It's not a spiky. It's pointy. Spike's good. Spike, yeah. And then it it has these little flowers. Or oh, little... right, right. No, there you go. There you go. Oh, and you can nice. boy out. Yes, when I made it. Oh, we both yeah, got the yeah. same. Oh snap! <laughs> yeah. So if you, you pull go. up one of the little flowers, you can talk with them. Oh, they actually like. <laughs> right, right, right. They move like a little mouth. They're very cute. They're good. I need and to see that on a video this pods. year, Tony. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I need yeah. to see you talking to an empty right now. I'll do like a Romeo and Juliet little production. <laughs> and then it goes uh, then it goes to a last poor Yorick at the end where they all turn into skulls. 
<laughs> yeah. That's it. Tony, you need to see the seed pods. They're, they're the funniest things. They look like, Jesse just said, like screaming skulls almost. Did you sort of grow them last year then, did you? Yeah, yeah. They're really fun. Do you know what? I don't know if we'll touch on it. Maybe it's a good segue. Um, but they're brilliant for winter sowing, if anyone's doing winter sowing. Because um, mm -hmm. they like a bit of the cold and they grow really quite well in the jugs. That's ones that, that's how I grew them last last year. They're really good. What do you mean the jugs? Like what Audrey does them plastic mm -hmm. jugs and leave, so them you, out, yeah. leave them outside. Leave them outside. Yeah, I just yeah. literally wept, left outside, went back like three months later, and was like, oh, lovely. That's jug done. <laughs> Didn't have to think have about you, it. Have you had much like self self seeding from them? Because I bought a plant. The reason that I'm keen to have a go at them this year from seed is I bought a plant. Um, you know, like at the end of the season where there's the sad looking plants that have stopped flowering in the garden centre, it was something, it was like a quid or something. And I bought Risky. one, stuck it in the front garden, which is just, like, it's like barren landscape out there of gravel. It's really dry and awful. This thing's just magnificent and it's self seeded like all the way in yeah. all the difficult patches of the garden, like at the mm. back there against the wall where That's there's brilliant. like no water and freezing cold frost pocket. And it's, they're just yeah. wonderful. They're growing away oh, really I happy. I was blown away because this is the first, last year was the first year I was saving seed. And um, although the variety I had was an F1 variety, I'm just curious to see what it'd come back as anyway. So I saved the seed from it. The amount of seed you get from literally one spear, um, mm. spear from the flower is insane. And I think I've brought so many different varieties from Chilton seeds and you probably get like 25, three pound. I, from this one little spike, I probably got over... 300 plus i don't even know they're so small you can't really count them but filled envelopes and envelopes with these seeds so i imagine they're quite good at self-seeding because they just there's so much of it and they just go everywhere um mm. but they're brilliant once you buy a variety you like and if it is if it isn't an f1 then just save the seed don't buy it again so good for seed mm -hmm. well, audrey let's see um, um annuals let's see annuals for you know i, I want some nice bright color do you know what I mean? I want to, where would I start? I think a stack is a good one, well, it, which kind of is. JB's it, nodding there. Uh, I'm sure he hasn't got a. Mm, <laughs> oh, no. Mm, no, yeah. I had, I no, have comments stack on is stocks. beautiful. Stock is beautiful. Larkspur is kind of stock looking. Uh, but a little trickier to start than stock is. Stock is almost like a marigold to me like it just it just comes uh i know you've you've grown cosmos mm -hmm. um but they have a lot of wonderful colors uh of cosmos i'm just trying to look here at my database as we're talking Is, um, how how big do the stock ones grow stock ones they, I, and depending on variety but they'll go like 12 18 inches all right right yeah um and i they have different you know varieties that'll do mm -hmm. either be a little bit smaller or a little bit bigger i like the idea mind you of i think we, we touched on this a couple of weeks ago of like sewing them in rows in me like in me beds and i like that idea and i also like the nothing to do with companion planting i'm not kind of worried about that but i would like you know just say cabbages then flowers then you know how you see in like some like garden mm -hmm. magazines or yeah. yeah. you know it looks so mm. that that's what I'm aiming for. So like Yeah. You know what I mean? So No, they they'd be beautiful like that. Um well, I did find is the, also I mean I did oh, find those mm. Cosmo and I remember Steve again mentioned he says they'll they'll grow big tone. You know what I mean? And some of them are coming up. They do. They're yeah. yeah. They're a, they're 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 a big tall. That's why they're a good cut flower, though, because the stem is there. You can get a really right. good stem on them. Yeah. So right. that's why they're probably one of the most common. I I also like to put amaranth in my um, raised beds. And depending on what style you grow, I mean, they can get three feet tall. And then their their pods come down like dreads. Uh, I mean, <laughs> they're, 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 they're just gorgeous. They are. There's something gorgeous. to see. They're really good. They really are, are spectacular. And you only need like one or two plants to really make an impact. And are these annuals then, Audrey? Are they like so you, I can They are annuals, oh, yes. We in the potty mouth world can kind of sow them now. Yes. When when would we sow them? Because we're you know, you know, oh, second I've of got, February. Well, I, have, I have ten jugs outside so far. Uh and larkspur and stock 
are two of the plants that are out there. Right. Um, and, oh, and so is the amaranth. The amaranth went out yesterday. Um, and they're beautiful. Have you grown poppies? Poppies are, look, want to, you know, real pop of color. Poppies are crazy beautiful. The, in the olden days, Audrey, honestly, I'd cut them down. I'd pick them and I'd, I'd weed, I'd hoe them. You know what I mean? Because it was... A, it, it, <laughs> You can get fancy ones now, though. Well, I really mean, fancy. Yeah, yeah. I know. I totally, so far, I totally, but I always remember, you know, like just battling with like <laughs> wild poppies, you know what I mean? Thinking, I just want like a tidy garden. I, you know how like Jess can just kind of let it grow, let it come out. <laughs> you know, I've got to get over a couple of hurdles before I can kind of, you know what I mean, get yeah. to that. So it was like, well, poppies are a little more uh, flowy and, you know, how they move. I don't know if they do as good in a straight line mm -hmm. as maybe a stock a wood line. or calendula wood, but they're beautiful the way they just blow in the in the wind. Not not a great cut flower though. Like no. you'd be lucky if you got them home, let alone into a vase. Yeah, they do not last. Oh long right, at all. right. Also, they'll just peel over after you. You just they're looking absolutely magnificent and you cut the stem and you walk two meters up a plot and it's lost all its petals. Like you've got yeah. nothing. No, they they're not um... looking. <laughs> seed pods in, in the winter, like in the autumn. I've still left a load of mine with the seed pods on and they're just so nice at this time of year. Really, really pretty. And if you get the bread seed variety, I mean they're like huge pods. They're beautiful. What did you say there, Audrey? Bread seed. Bread seed just a kind of poppy right and they they have a beautiful uh center that when the petals fall off you have this really cool like, like architectural Greek, Greek vase yeah. or something isn't it? yeah they're yeah really they're nice. beautiful beautiful see it's still you know like we're talking like the word like self-seeding it it's still hard for me to spot a self-seeded what i can kind of tell a poppy you know what i mean not you know what i mean from a weed yeah. And how long do you leave it before you think that's a weed? That ain't, you know what I mean? This is where I'm kind of <laughs> struggling. Do you know what I mean? It's like, well, so you confuse you weeds, weeds with poppies? Anything, or any kind of self seed. If it's not a mean? vegetable, he's okay. going to have it out. Specifically planted it there. <laughs> I'm going to say. When I was talking about transplanting weeds accidentally last time, it's the, um, I grow like Nigella, you know, like Love in the Mist. And we only put, I think we only probably put it in once, but it is now everywhere. So and it comes up in like, you know, like literally carpets of it. And you can take like a whole clump and break it into bits. And uh, But I've also got a new weed that's blown onto the plot that looks really, really similar to it. So that's what I had kind of carefully moved across. And then as it got to about this tall, I was like, oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you've actually been transplanting weeds thing last year i did yeah this new you know when a new weed comes onto your plot it's just like really offensive you're like, oh what is this and it, that's <laughs> yeah that, we've got that now so. weed for for me just seems to smother every you know bit of soil you know what i mean so i never like you say even maybe the flowers might not come through you know what i mean mark any any thoughts are you yeah, I'm just thinking of, of other ones that I'm doing, and one that I'm gonna I'm gonna group these two together that might not sound like they should be together, but sweet peas and lupins. So I think a lot of us mm -hmm. are already doing sweet peas, and I think there's three three reasons mm -hmm. I've got these two. One is they attract pollinators, which obviously is fantastic for your your fruit and veg that you're growing. The other is the um, the nitrogen fixes in the soil, like normal peas and beans and things are. They'll they'll fix nitrogen into the into the soil for you. And the third thing is, and I only I only found this out earlier today, and it seems quite obvious when, when you think about it. So when I was looking at the allotment where I'm going to put my sweet peas, and I'm like, oh, it's going to cast a shadow because obviously they're going to go really tall. Mm -hmm. Hopefully they're going to go really tall. And lupins, even dwarf lupins grow to like a metre, a metre and a half. They go really, really tall. So like use the shade to your advantage. So if you want to grow like, if you're growing like lettuce or spinach mm -hmm. or something like that, Grow the lupins in between them, and they're just going to provide that natural mm. shade over your sort of leafy greens. Or so again, yeah, the way I'm going to have my sweet pea set up, I'm going to have two palette collars, and then arches going in between them. So there's obviously going to be space behind where the mm -hmm. sweet peas are. So just fill that up full of leafy greens, and it's going to provide that like natural shade to look after them. So don't bolt like dead quickly, you know, during the mm. during the peak of the summer. Mm. 
Oh, idea. Mark's been doing his research. Yeah, Mark, research. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to have to move Mark down under the bottom. Hey, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> wow, that's a good, that's a great. Yeah. I, actually, you know, like climbing flowers as well. I've never even mm. thought, of, you know what I mean? Of, of, of trailing flowers, climbing flowers, whatever, you wow. know. I Because I was like, the shade's a bad thing. But then when you actually read about it, look into it, say, use the shade to your advantage. Just stick mm-hmm. the lettuce under the yeah. shade and then, you know, it's absolutely spot on. I have a question on lupins. Um, someone mentioned recently that they're really vulnerable to um, slug damage. And we've got a load. Once again, it's one of the ones under the blue light there. What? How do you cope with it? How do you, how do you save a lupin from getting munched? By a slug. Do you, you just, just ask the sixty-five million dollar yeah, question? Everyone's looking at like, like oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I you, do, those, you do this. You import one of those leopard slugs who eats <laughs> other slugs, <laughs> and you let him take and care. And lash of it. it to the edge of your lupin so that it can't go anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah you get it all far away. Away. so far in my life, I have never managed to get a lupin past about this big. Mm. And not That's have hard. it just eaten off at the bottom by slugs. Can you keep it in not pots once. to get quite big? No, and then transplant? I've tried them in pots. Oh. I've tried them in the ground. I've tried buying them as big plants, spending loads of money. Tried them from sea because when we first took on the allotment, there was wild lupins everywhere. They were incredible. It was absolutely beautiful, like those blue ones. You know, the ones that sort of are the bog standard wild one. And then from the moment that the allotment was cleared, we've never been able to grow another one. I've wow. tried so many times. Yeah. I've tried in other people's gardens. I've tried in mine. I just can't do it. So I'm managing two expectations. Up from me, two two allotments up from me, there is a there is a lupin that's really well established, and it gets to about a meter, probably a meter, like nearly two meters tall every year, and flowers wonderfully. Why doesn't mm. she have any slugs? I I don't know. Mm. I really. Mm. She must just like cover a, a, like a two square meter area with slug pellets just like a like a lawn like a blue like, like a blue mat <laughs> yeah <laughs> a nice mulch no i've heard they're yeah. really invasive too that's what i had a comment yeah. yeah the other day saying if you get those going you won't ever get rid of them seeds. oh yeah because oh. apparently the seeds they produce just go everywhere we so can dream. if you really wow. can get one established you got them for life oh, wow. yeah so i've not grown them for that reason is, I'd rather them over child. To be I'm honest. kind of between um, Jesse <laughs> ah. and Tony. I like things neat and tidy, but I also like it a little fluid mm-hmm. uh, as it grows. So I thought, I don't know that I want those all over the place. So I've not grown those. I didn't realize slugs and snails would be. I was thinking flowers would be like not on on the radar. It, so they they're just as vulnerable to the. Audrey, you've yeah. sold us a lie. <laughs> <laughs> what? No, I don't. I don't have problems with slugs over here. Uh, I think we've had that conversation. Oh, I'm signing off now. No. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't. When I I found a leopard slug last year, and I one. thought, oh my gosh, they're horrible. And um, I thought, now I know what you guys are always talking about. <laughs> There's, it was Outrageous. just horrible and it was under like a rock and you know and then i found <laughs> out it was like a cannibal um slug eater and i thought well let's put this one right back because <laughs> maybe there's others where he came from uh but yeah i don't have trouble with slugs sorry mm. Mm. We've, flowers um... bring new pests as well so earwigs are ones that i could not get rid of last year and they're they creep me out so much oh they're, they're just too quick oh <laughs> cannot get rid of yeah. them horrible oh, you're hitting you're hitting nerve there <laughs> <laughs> i quite like earwigs they're like wood life for me oh i don't mind them scorpions man you like yeah, wood lice, says, isn't it? Yeah. oh wow oh, wood lice are mate. adorable they're my favorite <laughs> Yeah. No, I've never heard that, that in the same no, sense just before. Me. Wood no. lice are adorable. Yeah, I'm they are, oh, especially the ones that roll up into a little ball. They're probably still really wood lice. Aren't they? Oh. It's the earwigs. Oh, oh apparently you can yeah. eat wood lice. Apparently they're part of the crustacean family. Apparently oh. they taste like prawns. prawns. Not that I've tried them. I've only seen it on the TV. <sighs> but if anybody yeah, yeah. wants to try one, can, the can little roly poly things. Yeah, is yeah. that what? Wood... Okay. I huh. think you call them pill bugs. 
I think that's uh, it. Yeah. We call American them roly polies. Oh, I've had yeah. roly polies. John, we're just yeah. talking about slugs uh, and you not having any slugs. I was like, I think I probably prefer the slugs than the 17 year locust invasion that you've got mm. coming your way. Mm. Yes. Oh, yeah. oh, I'm already, I saw some video and I'm, I'm scared for what's coming. I'm scared for you. Here. Yeah. I yeah. keep thinking about it. No, it's th that'll keep me up at night thinking oh. that they're all out there. Well, do you know how eat. long it lasts for? Like, do you know? I I guess they're out for the season, Goodness and then they God. breed and go back underground for another seventeen years. Oh, you! <laughs> do they eat ev ev everything? Will they just come like eat flowers and veg and I don't know? Apparently, they're like uh, locust. I'm gonna say, let's go back to Bible times. Yeah, it's like the locust came in and took everything out. Yeah, so we will say. see what happens to the garden this year oh, because nice. we used to have a, a home a couple doors down that had like 50 trees in their backyard so we're sitting on our deck having dinner and the cicadas are oh. i mean it's so loud you can almost not hear each other and i think <laughs> this is not even one of the bad years so we shall see yes yeah. Send us a video if you have to send us a video so we can I'll see. At least it. send you sound. I don't know that I yeah. would get close <laughs> enough to them to send you a video. Even because you have to keep all your windows shut as well. Like they will they try and get inside. Uh well, <laughs> new nightmare okay, on now I'm horrified. Yeah. Now I'm horrified. To sleep tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like <laughs> I'm trying to come inside my home. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm not gonna sleep till next winter. <laughs> Hey, let's okay. let's get back to pansies, right? Pansies. Sorry. <laughs> do you, Audrey, oh, do you have pansies? Is that what you call pansies? Pansies over there, or yes, we have right. pansies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> He's what? so insane, Tony. <laughs> no, just it's uh, well. Sometimes you say something to Audrey and like pill you get a dumbfounded look, look. Like, what are you talking about? You know yeah, yeah, no, we have pansies. Yes. <laughs> We so definitely are we, do. Are, are most flowers then susceptible to some sort of bug, insects, so is it is I was thinking I'm getting away with, you know what I mean? Yeah, I think so. I think the main one that just devastates veg and flowers is aphids, isn't it? Um, I, I really struggled just last year. Dahlias gets horrible earwigs and my roses were just inundated with black fry and aphids and it's just one of those things it's a horrible you have to keep coming out every day to get rid of them and then within an hour they're back um so but yeah i think flowers do tend to come with their own set of pests that you have to deal with mm. yeah. but oh not white <laughs> cabbage butterflies mm -hmm. no no so, nothing to that level you know right yes. all right 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 Don't it's mind. more like sucking sucking sap bugs rather than eating the leaves and petals isn't it it's a bit so of a balance, your... isn't it? Because yeah. a lot of the um a lot of the flowers are more likely to bring in beneficial insects, I think. Um, you know, especially the I think the ones to target if you're looking to bring beneficial insects in is um like the umbellifers. Things with the really small flowers usually, things like mm. um yarrow, dill. Alyssum. Yeah, um, verbena, that kind of thing. And um, alyssum smells so pretty. Mm, it's got all the tiny little Plus yeah, this. you just yeah. brush that and it smells mm. beautiful. Uh, also, maybe echinacea, that's an, an uh, perennial. And you'll get some nice bright color with echinacea. Mm -hmm. um, that and might be a good one. So, so um, now, or when, when, when is our like window? Oh, my echinacea is out in a jug right now. Right. Yeah. And could I just show them now? Audrey and like put a little bit of heat on and then put them out in in May. Yeah, I don't see why not. Because mm -hmm. I'm because I think most if you of started the them now, you'd, you'd, you'd at least get a nice sized plant by then. Right, right. Because I'm hoping you see most of the plants you know I can sow now or within this next month, and then take up the allotment. Yeah, and you can get plants out much earlier than we can. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. you have more wiggle room there in your spring you have a nice spring you kind of have a longer spring we don't have that so it's a little more of a 
a waiting game to when you get your stuff out in the spring. Mm-hmm. But you can get those because they're perennials. They'll take a, a bit of cold and, and some frost. Is there anything I, that's... I'm... Sorry, Jesse. Is there anything that's absolutely not worth sowing now? Like it's completely the wrong time of year, like between now and March. What are the sort of things that people should be avoiding? Anything tender, I guess. Um, yeah, I wouldn't plant my zinnias. Tender annuals. Yeah. I was yeah. just about to ask about zinnias. When are you putting them in? Yeah, I wouldn't plant those. I wouldn't even start. Th- I'm not going to start those till maybe April. Okay. Because those can go mm-hmm. out uh, quite small and they they'll grow so quickly once they're out. Maybe mm-hmm. even like a straw flower. I don't know if I'd start that one yet. Um. So you have never heard of that straw flower? I've seen they're beautiful. Straw they're beautiful. They look like they're dried, even though they're mm-hmm. not. So when the you sound cut them, of them is incredible. When yes, you it's crispy. Yeah, it sounds crispy. <laughs> uh, and Are they good get, for drying? I think they're, they're quite good for drying as well, aren't they? Drying. Yes, they're beautiful yeah. for drying. Don't they lose any of their know. color. They, they yeah, just they look stay. exactly like. They did when they were alive. They're amazing. They're like very jewel toned as well, aren't they? Very pretty. Yes. Super well, shiny they're... as well. Like yeah. they're, yes. they almost look like beetle like a... shells, like they're yes. little pointy bits. They're amazing flowers. But I love that. You're right. I, exactly Jesse, I love the sound of them. Mm. They're just crunchy. Get them on the list, Soph. Get them on the <laughs> list. Uh, so okay. we'll have to have actually little dates wrote on Soph as well, like, you know, a little oh, sort of so. guide. You know what I mean? Because it's. It's getting a little bit complicated for us newbies at the top. Well, and most of your yeah. your seed packets will give you mm-hmm. a little indication, like you know, six to eight mm-hmm. weeks before your last frost, mm-hmm. uh, twelve weeks, which um, we're almost all past twelve weeks at this point. Um, mm-hmm. Ish. Hi, hi. Oh, Mr. Scott. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe another week or two. What was that, Jeff? Is anyone growing sunflowers oh, yeah. this year? I used to until yes, Tony exactly. said they were horrible. Well, someone told me, and then I oh. actually could physically see veg plants. What was it? Um, Alleliopathy. Something happened. I can't forget which one's the, the actual. Oh, was it? Yeah. I remember last year, Tony, what happened. Some yeah. sort of chicory I was growing, and you could physically see crappy little plants, you know, then bigger, nicer ones at the back of the bed, you know. And Audrey gave us them seeds. It was, I had them all over the bloody shop. <laughs> she nearly killed me bloody garden, man. Well, and, and honestly, I really wonder, we talked about this last week, I think. Uh, is it the fact that it's a sunflower, or is it the fact that it's a bigger rooted plant that's taking more of the that's, nutrition and water good, from the bed yeah. than yeah. what the little teeny uh, chicory is taking. Yeah, you're probably spot on there because Audrey, when I was actually taking them down, I mean, the root balls on some of them were like, they were moving me beds. Do you know what I mean? They're like, they're a big, you know, if you if they if they get established, whatever, which ones I was, was got off of you, they were right. like a lemon colored ones. Some lemon of, queen. Mm. Those are big. Those are big sunflowers. Oh, big mother chuckers if weren't yeah. off. And like I say, if once that you know, it's some were like piddly little things, but a couple of them like really got established with like stalks like that. You know what I mean? It's like see, I think that's like planting something by a tree. Mm-hmm. The tree is gonna get the nutrition and the yeah. water first. Yeah. I mean, that's mm-hmm. that's just the way it is. I might um, do the odd dwarf. Sunflower, do you know what I mean? That's kind of keep keep things in the control. Oh, and they're adorable. <laughs> they're adorable, and they're pretty, right. and they're happy looking. And uh-huh. yeah, well, multi no, micro sun short ones a... make good cut flower as well. Yeah, yeah. Little ones. Micro sun is a really good variety if you wanted to try. Just like it comes up in a bush, and you just get loads of little ones. It's really cute. Like still decent sized heads are probably about that big. Micro sun, did you say? Micro sun, yeah. Micro you usually get them from. Just the, the list will be in Discord. <laughs> <laughs> I got my no- I got my notes here. I like the idea of JB's thing though. Like ten is a is a nice kind of manageable, manageable. Mm. For, you know what I mean? Just like not to get out of hand and you know. What you mean? guys are yeah. so practical. Um, oh my god! Get out of hand. Okay, I'm, I'm not like my list. Fifty thousand. <laughs> get wild. Get wild. My list has my list has grown to hundred and one currently. 
Um, oh, I ordered more. Goodness. Is that just? <laughs> is that just? Is that including all the different varieties of certain? Flowers? Yeah, that's different varieties, um, annuals, biannuals, all of them. Perennials. And are you so? Of, I mean, that just sounds like mind-bogglingly like over See, the absolutely. top. I'm that thinking it sounds fabulous. I know you've got a huge. I'm all with you, Sophie. It sounds fabulous. <laughs> are you no, I'm, to, I'm, sorry, are you intended <laughs> to kind of grow all them then, Sophie? Yeah. I'm trying to rein it in. Um, my main thing I want to do is different varieties, all of maybe the same plant. So, for example, this year I will be doing a lot of cosmos. I've, I'm looking, and I've already got like ten different varieties of cosmos: um, snapdragons, zinnias, dahlias. And then just like a variety of different foliages. Um, so loads of different varieties. And I'll probably only do one or two plants of them. So I can just experience them all and see what I like and I don't like. Um, but I'm tr yeah, I'm trying to rein it in a bit. <laughs> but it's impossible. So I see a new one. I'm like, oh, that would look nice. Or I can use that one. I really want to grow that. So we'll see what survives. It's, it's going to be we'll survival have to put, of the You'll have to put sort of your your list not just our list here what we're talking about your list yeah, in. i want to see your list that that <laughs> list sounds i mean impressive. i have got i tell you if right so zinnias if anyone's interested in zinnias get the zinderella ones i'm pretty sure people have seen them they're kind oh, of like like scabiosas cute. yeah yes they're cute. Yeah, the, the lilac know. and they now do peach. <laughs> we'll have to saw jess's light yeah, there we go yeah. <laughs> there, we, there yeah. we go yeah they're really I cute guess. And then Cosmos, a really nice one that I've seen that I'm really excited to grow this year, called Pop Socket. I don't know if you've seen that. So you get like the frilly back bit, but then it's kind of all congested kind of in the top. middle. Okay. It's like frilly. It's like frilly okay. in the middle. I'll, I can, I'll do the whole list, but I've got some really cool varieties. That I'm just so excited to see. Yeah, what I have like. one of those. It's called a double decker. So it has, a uh, <laughs> yeah, it has the regular uh, petals. And then it, it's like, um, a crown with petals coming out of the crown yeah so it's pretty it's much very, I think I'm, the same I'm thing. very excited to try that one i think it looks really cute yeah i like so that idea so of mind of like doing like a certain plant with different you know mm. colors of it for for one of a better description do you know what I mean i quite like that you know what i mean like, yeah. just I, colors though for uh, like textures like mm -hmm. different every, all the different shapes so all the cosmos i got they all look different so like oh, cosmos um, one that's yeah. yeah cupcake ones i don't know if you've seen the cupcake ones they literally Aren't look like a cute? cupcake um shell they do yeah, they look brilliant. like cupcake papers they're so cute they're, that's exactly it so there's just so yeah, so many beautiful. different ones so even if it's just one variety, one variety of flower you or just one flower you choose, just get all the different kind of varieties of it and go with that. It's just you can still make a decent floral arrangement um, if that's your goal. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, brilliant. Have you have you got the really small cosmos, like the the orange and yellow ones? There's a variety of cosmos which has these really like long spindly stems and tiny little like cosmos flowers on the end of it. I had it in the back garden not last year, the year before. It was so pretty. It was, was it? really, really sweet. I can't think what it was called, actually. I might be able to find it. Where did you, do you remember where you brought them? I'm just going to have a look. Did you saw them from I... seeds, Jess, did you? I did, yeah. I must admit, Cosmo is kind of, it's a one that I've grown, so I'm quite happy with it. Do you know what I mean? I'm quite, you know what I mean? Yeah. I can do, I can do GB. I was going to say, you know you can head. do that you know one, I mean? yeah. I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm Very fresh. easy. They're I'm really qualified easy. in it, you know what I mean? It's I so like nice cosmos because you get you get yes. so much out of it. Just yeah. one little transplant and it just it explodes. Mm -hmm. Um it's but another thing to put on everyone's sulfurous. Sulfurous. Oh, no. Let me write it down. Mm -hmm. Same shape flower as you know, a classic cosmos flower, but just much, much smaller and on these really like spindly okay. stems. So they all look like they're kind of doing this separately and they are really lovely. What height oh, did they grow then, Jess? Them ones? Not enormous, I'd say about two foot. Right. But like the the growth of the plant is like quite a long way from the, the flower, if you know what I mean. Like they're quite mm -hmm. yeah, and are you, nice looking things. Jess, you know what I'm kind of aiming this at you where you know you're you're quite happy with it. Are you happy with plants that coming over onto your paths? So you've got to kind of, I'm saying, get wet when you walk past them in the rain and stuff. Are you quite happy with? <laughs> I mean, there's a, there's a balance to be had because if it was if it was my choice, they'd be just like everywhere. And Mum likes a very 
neat edge. So between us, we sort of negotiate and it kind of comes off somewhere in the middle. But yeah, I'm I'm quite pro just things flopping over. As long as my grass is neat at the edge, because if, the, if they flop over and then there's grass and wood, like the dampness is just like slug, slug heaven. Mm-hmm. So as long as you keep those edges tidy, like it's all it's nice. That one is... Um... It's highly invasive in the US, apparently. So not one for Audrey. Oh, maybe Audrey will keep staying away from that cosmos. <laughs> But they look amazing. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm going to have a look in a bit. We've, well, um... We haven't talked about daisies yet. I mean, oh, that's, yes. a whole, that's a whole, mm. you know. Talking of invasive, stay well Daisy. away from oxide daisies. I was about <laughs> to say how much I love them. <laughs> oh, God. I grew, this is in fact the seed packet that I grew last, uh, two, three years ago now. I sowed a couple and dotted them around and I cannot get rid of them. They are in everything. They're in every bit of compost I oh. sow. They're in They're all like pulling up underneath the poly tunnel. They're all stuck in the lining of the yeah. pond. Nice. They've like even self-seeded in the pot with the water lily. So they're like pushing mm. the water lily out of the pond. They're horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Buggers, stay away from them. There's, oh um, for the, the biodiversity interested people, there's a specific tiny little fly that's uh, only associated with oxide daisies, which I just enjoy oh, as a little yeah. fact. I must <laughs> have a wild things. population of them. Yeah, you've got loads. <laughs> <laughs> I like the um, Livingston daisies, you know, the ones that open and close. So at, at night they close and during the day they open up. Oh, is that they're, like the osteopermum? Uh, yes. They're, oh, they're lovely. Yeah, I love having them all over the place. They're brilliant. Yeah. African daisies, I think. They're yeah. I love name. African, yeah, the they African daisies are wow. beautiful. I'm even, I think I'm the last of the class here. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> bottom of the class. Yeah, don't because, sat on. I don't know if you two have just got words written on the screen that you don't even know, but you can read them. <laughs> we've, not, we've not even talked about edibles yet either. So we're like um, orange, where you can get the little, is it like the flowers taste like cucumber? Well, you see them in, you know, if you've got a fancy bar and you get like a fancy orange, gin and tonic, God. they've got the, the flowers in an ice cube and they go inside and taste all in. Cucumbery and uh, what was it? Nasturtiums that we were talking about before. You can eat them mm. and the, apparently the seeds, nasturtium seeds, you can. I keep can't them, wait to do that this year. Pickle them, yeah. And they, they taste mm-hmm. like capers. They've got a really they salty. They don't taste anything like capers. They look like capers. <laughs> oh, it's fake they news. Don't. Fake news. You've done that, you, know Jesse? What, you know how strong a nasturtium leaf tastes? Mm. Yeah. It's like that. Like this much of that condensed into a it's tiny that. little ball like that. That if you put it like it just explodes yeah. right up the back of your nose and like permeates through your eyeball. Oh, no, wow. You're not it tastes anything it. like a caper, but they're delicious. <laughs> You should try that, Tony. You should definitely try that. <laughs> See, so if that sounds like what we should try to eat instead of chilies. Like, <laughs> yeah. Sounds like a mustard wasabi <laughs> thing going on. Uh-huh. Yes. So if I've got any bowl of set like file wasabi, it's good. <laughs> Why does everyone say that they taste like capers? Then are they are they just lying, or did you have some oh, strong ones? They get called poor man's capers. Yeah, yeah. And they're small and green, and if you put them in vinegar and salt, they mm. taste like vinegar and salt, like a caper does. Um, but they don't. They it's like a caper that that that's had a quite intense relations with a massive <laughs> amount of wasabi <laughs> there you go it's it's like, you know capers are like just salty and vinegary and really it's yeah. like it's definitely an assertion <laughs> pretending to be a caper are they hey. good? brilliant anything else so far we can we can dive into as newbies or anyone Yes, um, just as important as your flowers, if, again, depending on what your goal is for growing flowers, it could just be to look nice in your allotment, that's fine. But if you are doing cut flowers, um, start thinking about growing your grasses as well. So anything that you can use as your sort of accents or your foliage. Um, So a really cool one that I'm going to do this year is Celosia, which I guess technically is a flower rather than a grass, but it's one called Flamingo Feathers. Be- oh, oh, and you can get a beautiful ones. one. Oh, lovely. Oh. Yeah, there's a they're like beautiful pink. one. Oh, they're great. I grew that last year. That's gorgeous. Yeah. Is so think about your grasses. So it, does it grow just like, you know, in the, the grasses from a garden centre? Or is it like, imagine like grass, like a lawn grass? Is it a grass? No. They're just 
I said when I say grasses, I I mean foliages. So basically anything that's green and you can take like um, just like the the stems from it or the branches from it. I'm not sure what the right terminology is. Um, so for example, like that tomato I showed you guys, which is like variegated. Um, mm. I'm going to grow mm. grow that, and I'm just going to take the vines off it and use those as like different accents to uh, floral arrangement. So anything you can use like that. Um, another good one is bunny tails. I don't know if you guys have seen yep. those. Yep. They're like teeny yeah. tiny. I'm, so I'm just going to do what GAB does. Oh, <laughs> just, right. uh -huh. They're yeah. so yeah. cute. Those are so <laughs> cute. And they're so soft. They're, they're so, so soft. Lovely. They're just Sorry. they're like little bunny tails. They're so cute. So they're really cool. So just start yeah. thinking about along, if you are doing stuff for floral arrangements and bouquets, and maybe start thinking about the other stuff outside of flowers that you're going to add to it. And it can't, it doesn't even have to be through growing. I'm going to start thinking about certain areas that I can go to to potentially forage um, stuff. So if there's any places that I know that's got some thistles, I might go and wait until they're dried out and go get myself some thistles. Obviously, don't overtake anything. Um, but yeah, just start thinking about those little things is quite important because that's mm -hmm. something I really wish I did last year. Because so I just had like this, this whole vase of dahlias and I was like, that's nice, but it's kind of meh. I want to add things into it. So um, I'm going to do that this year. Have you ever grown gay feather? No. What's no, that? I just... <laughs> what are you laughing at, Jimmy? Nothing. I'm saying nothing. <laughs> I got I got given yeah, some seed at Christmas for gay feather, which is like, yeah, I think it's like it's a strap leaf. Um, Does it sort of like cascade over, kind of like a pamper? I think so. I'm just going yeah. to have a quick look, but I think it's um, actually, it's I might not search gay feather. It's also <laughs> known as the blazing star. If you, if you uh, L I A T R I S. Let me write these. It's down. almost like a toad flax. Like the, yeah, the blazing, yeah, blazing star. But apparently, you can use its foliage, like before the flowers come out, you can use. Mm. Where have you gone? Oh, I, I see. Yeah. So, like, you can use, just as the flowers are about to come out, they've got like this really good, like opposing foliage, and apparently you can use. Yeah. Can oh, that's brilliant. That. No, they're they're really, if anyone Googles that, they're really cool. Yeah. Um, don't, it's kind of like. Don't sure. Google what gear, what was it called? Gay yeah, feather. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It might get something <laughs> totally different. You know what I mean, Sophie, can I just rewind you back there to what you said about it? There was a variegated tomato plant. Mm. You're just going to mm. grow this tomato plant just for not even to bother just with it. Really... Oh, I might use one or two tomatoes on it, um, but it's ma its main purpose in life for me will be its foliage. Um, wow. I'm hoping. I've, I'm pretty sure. I've not seen anyone use tomato vines, but I imagine they're strong enough to sort of sit upright for a little while. I'm not sure. And then I guess the other thing you've got to think about is how long do they last in a vase? They might not last long enough yeah. as everything else I've got going on um and also I don't know how you condition them so <laughs> we'll have to it will all just be a massive experiment to see how it lasts mm -hmm. isn't that yeah, the it's... good thing about it though it's just like just try and you know like, yeah exactly absolutely. what you said you know you don't want ju just flowers because it's like you think flower 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 but then when you put them in the pot mm -hmm. it's what you've just said there oh yeah, yeah you look at it and you go oh it's too much I need mm -hmm. some this is where textures like think of all the different textures you can use. There's even, you can even use Cosmos, like um, before the flap, before it starts to flower, you can use all that foliage because mm. it's all feathery and it's yeah. nice. Um, there's another plant which is really cool for sort of dried flower arrangements. It's called the fiber optic plant. I don't know if you've seen it. It's like, it's oh, a grass. Oh yeah, it's a grass, and yeah. Once it splits from sort of, it splits from its stem, it kind of just all whispers out into like the fiber, like the little fiber optic lights you get. Mm -hmm. um it looks really nice in sort of dried flower arrangements really magical well another one that looks great in flower arrangements is hairy balls <laughs> <laughs> what you just don't i want to write that one down oh, no. i am not just saying it. i grew it last yeah. year specifically for potty mouth and <laughs> then we you know things Remember happened that. we didn't do it but they are gorgeous in a flower arrangement. Okay. So Does I it have an official them, name? You know it, really has it got yeah. a official name is Harry Balls. <laughs> I can't I'm sure that. it has some <laughs> Latin name, no but You can't even that's... search for that one. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, you can. I, it probably will. It might show up. 
as one of Jesse's the doing it. <laughs> yeah. No, so the the variety I grow is called Oscar. Do the click on see. images. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> wow, that no, really, really is. It's, it's stunning. <laughs> and and that is not always Gom the word. Gomphocarpus, which is also a good name. Would they be ones, Audrey, your oh hairy balls that I could sew now for for mere June planting? Yes, and they, they grow five, six feet tall. Right. Mm, wow. So you've got a beautiful long stem and you cut. Oh, and I would say <laughs> harvest them before they're too. Uh, behave, Mark, behave yourself, I'm just going to say the six foot yeah, hairy cut balls. Them when they're young. <laughs> No, it's on a stem, and there's probably a dozen hairy balls on each stem. Um, no, seriously, they're beautiful, and uh, they're kind of architectural looking, but you harvest them before they're going to seed, because once they notice... There's too many words in the old, sentence here. You're 12 years old, JB. Now stop. Um, I'm sorry. JB's dying. <laughs> but if you let them go too long, they start to go to seed, and then they're useless in it because then they keep going to seed so you end up with seeds everywhere now, anybody ever so. see the the phoenix nights <laughs> where they it's getting bring worse, out, to bring <laughs> out that the bouncy castle did anyone ever see that phoenix nights where it's it's a 20 foot fucking balls man you know what I mean? it's like, well, that's what the image i'm getting there with all oh. these hairy balls you know what i mean oh, i have picture i think i put some pictures up on um oh, we all have yeah. to grow these hairy balls yeah you know? yes. mine parsnips hairy it's balls ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So have a good show and tell at the end perfect yeah. perfect hairy balls <laughs> <laughs> All our videos will be taken down because of the titles. Oh. <laughs> Look at my hairy balls. I've got the best hairy balls in the village. <laughs> I've got the tallest hairy balls. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, and asters. We haven't talked about asters, mm -hmm. have we? Mm -hmm. Was They're it another one? Beautiful. Was it zinnias you give me or your asters? I can no, I gave you um, zinnias and sunflowers, apparently, right. and wrecked your whole garden. Right. <laughs> I'm going to throw mums. I'm writing the list, but I'm oh, going to throw mums on there as well. That's what I heard. Yeah, they're lovely. Such good cut flower. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, and a still bee. I'm going to throw that one in there as well, because that's also quite good. So like I mentioned as well, we'll put this big list in mm -hmm. the Discord. So I'll make a new channel, like say a flower special. I'll pin this list to the top. So if anybody wants... <laughs> What we've talked about, or Sophie's like giant list, which would be lovely. You know what I mean? So, well, I'm I also actually make started a channel, yeah. Tony, for mm. flowers. I actually started. All a channel right, for right. Well, I'll, hopefully, I can pin. I just should be able to pin. Yeah, you pin it wherever you want. It. It's down near the bottom. I'm not going to just move the hairy balls. You know, what we're I mean? elevating the the importance of flowers. I will I will right post a photo of hairy balls. <laughs> Just so everyone <laughs> understands what I'm actually talking about. Right. <laughs> oh dear. How long have we been going? Have um, we been going over? A little while. I've yeah. not even mentioned comfrey. <gasps> as a as a beneficial flower, one of one of the main ones and the allotment uh, staple. Yeah, because mm. obviously it's got many benefits with making comfrey tea, which which by the way, people say it stinks, but until you actually experience it. In real life, you just can't believe just how bad it is. It's like you sort of when you get a whiff of yeah. it, it's awful. Is it but that bad? The bees, it's really bad. The bees go absolutely crazy for the flowers, and my my plot when the, the comfrey grows at the edge of it, there's bees everywhere, all over, all the time. They're just there constantly. Mm. It's brilliant. Right. Would Did you, you say find? Oh, sorry, sorry, I was going to say, Mark. Would you say it's an invasive plant as well? Or well, I I got a particular variety called Bocking 14 which I think it doesn't yep. seed so it doesn't make seeds and drop but I think it can re-root underground right. but I, I chop it down quite quite a lot so sort of three or four times a year mm -hmm. it gets chopped down and it gets used for because I said I heard Audrey talking about it in one of the potty mates about doing a, a chop and drop with it a yeah. chop and drop yeah that's right mm -hmm. and using it yeah. like that so and I use it in um, if I'm filling a raised bed I'll just chop the comfrey down and fill the bottom layer of the raised bed with the comfrey as well. So it rots down and feeds in the bed. Mm. Instead, instead of making tea, because that tea's, oh, 
honestly tolerate <laughs> you know, up just here, from what i've heard tea. i thought there's oh, no way i'm brewing that stuff awful. no way it's awful it's heinous it's yeah horrible what's the so, flowers yeah. look like mark like little purpley blue sort of colored sort of tubular kind of flowers mm -hmm. um but I say it was just the bees on it last i think because i bought it as the bare root and it's been in a two or three years but last year was the first year it really it really took off and there was bees there was hundreds of them all this because you hear the noise first you hear like what's mm. that noise why is that plant mm. buzzing and you go over and there's <laughs> loads of them so warm, brilliant it? yeah I was going to say, did you find with yours that it also attracted mm. loads of ladybugs? Like, loads? Not that I noticed, no, but no? ladybugs is something I'm a little bit on the sh short side of, I think, of my pro. So anything that can attract mm. ladybugs in is, oh, is a good thing. Yeah. So that's that's another list we need, ladybug plants. It's a, good, um, it's a good recommendation for that kind of um, coming into wintertime, is leaving a lot of the flower stems and, and mm. stuff like that for, for hoverflies and ladybirds to... To overwinter in um a lot of people it depends on your your style of gardening but a lot of people will rip it all out and that means that any of those beneficial insects are gonna have to come back into your plot you know from further afield so if you can hollow stem stuff especially it's like perfect for little ladybirds to hide in but you still gotta rip it out though sometime no not not always sometimes it just starts regrowing from the base no i'm saying if you want to like your, your plot sorted you've still got to rip out everything to kind of make way for the new i couldn't leave i anything. leave mine oh. i leave my my rows uh i always get people coming along and say look at all those weeds it's like they'll be back the calendula will be back the verbena will be back um i don't cut it back until everything starts waking up it's in, okay. in, in what way do you cut it back then jb how how physically do you cut it back strimmer it or just no just parasecretaries if there's if there's stuff that's really dead and it's all definitely not going to come back to life um, then you just wait until kind of April, May is normally when I go in, you know, and it's properly warmed up. Everything that's in there would have, would have, um, come out, mm -hmm. just secretary it back to the base and it's probably going to regrow. Are it's you still doing, regrow, are you still it's doing fine. your attempt on the meadow? You know what I mean? Like yeah, sort of. One or? of the, so one of the things, uh, people, uh, promote about flower growth at allotments is bringing in vertebrates and it, it's the nectar source for, um, you know, people people think of it as a nice way to help wildlife and insects, and it is. Nectar sources are very important, but what is probably more important is that overwintering habitat and food plants for for insects and those kind of fundamental key parts of their life cycle. You know, nectar is a very small part of that, um, so providing it is good, it's nice, and it's always nice to see you know your plot buzzing and full of life but it's actually really important as well to provide those other bits that those kind of shelter the untidy bits that look a bit gross maybe you want to hide them away but they're still they're still an important part of that uh ecosystem that you you know if you want to build one it's a good idea anything else before we, i'm sure we've went well over the hour there now anything else before we wrap i, I up was this? just going to ask uh if do you guys have dusty miller over there <laughs> Yes. No, I, I, I know I know someone at work called Dusty Miller. <laughs> <laughs> so uncanny. But that's also a really nice filler for mm -hmm. a bouquet or and I always think it always looks beautiful underneath flowers oh, wow. or in oh, between. Ragwort. Yeah. Silver ragwort, yeah. Oh, is that what it's called? Is that it's official? Oh, okay. Okay. It's, it looks very it. different from normal ragwort. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, yeah, we yeah is it it's I think it's called Jack, Jack Jacob something or Jacobier. We used to sell it as um like doing hanging baskets. <clears throat> is it not the same as Cincinnaria? Is it not the same as that as well? Cincinnaria, that that's one. Of, that's oh, a is. variety of it. But uh, okay, I think that's what I've got. Yeah, and it also previously placed that is a beautiful. Spread. It's a beautiful flower to grow. Only it's yeah. not a flower. It's a a thriller. Like Would that be a thriller um, in a bouquet? Yeah, it might be. I guess. Well, there's it's thrillers, filler, filler, and thrillers, thrillers, right? That's so it. you kind of have to get a little bit of all of them in there. <laughs> the that's the a great last one, one that I've, I've put in as a recommendation that I'm trying for the first time this year is a ranunculus called, <gasps> um, what's it called? Fratelli Rose, I think it is. And it looks like a bit like um, 
what's it like apple blossom colors you know where it goes from like green oh, to lovely. pale yeah. apricot to pink um yeah how, how, tall, on, on a, how tall does it grow jess uh maybe about a foot and a half oh, but right. it, it has quite a nice like ranunculus often have really like quite thick stems and a bulb flower on top and this is just like a slightly looser looser version of it and they've got quite open flowers rather than the really tightly like loads and loads of petals a bit more open slightly frilly they look a little bit like a rock rose you know that sort of like a cistus it's got that sort of look but it's a ranunculus they're yeah. really sweet when Done did you start yours, sorry when did you start yours i haven't started them yet they're like you know the corms yeah the funny uh, little corms they like little claws really like that <laughs> but a guy um a couple of allotments up from me grew them last year and they were so beautiful mm. he's rummaged around and given me a couple of them so I'm gonna they are cool I've put a few in they've only just started coming up now but I did they those are sort of ones I think you can do at two points of the year um so I did them in the back end of October um and they're starting to come up now so they they're really cool little things hmm. like mini roses some of them yeah right oh, then I'll that down, it's a, that's I'll boggling my mind because it's uh, the ranunculus is the plant family and there's like 1,800 plants, but this is a specific, but is it a bulb? Know, like a, a ranunculus in terms of like, um, like grown for cut flowers, quite a standard sort of, it's not ranunculaceae or whatever it yeah, is, it's exactly. just ranunculus. Ranunculus, yeah. yeah. Interesting. But I'll hold on, it's, oh, I've just seen it, it's called um, Friandine Rose, it is so pretty. Yeah, so I need I need a list of like say ten plants or or so of Jess uh -huh. ready for me just to kind of maybe so <laughs> with it obviously buy from a supplier so and put out that's the, for the that's for the newbie one I'll put me JB's a little bit more advanced mm. he needs a, a ten that are a little bit more specialized oh and god then, <laughs> then we need another <laughs> ten that'll brave the the. <laughs> the so we want to put them in categories then shall we do you like 10 for like by ease and need uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. to begin a beginner level, intermediate and mark, expert old, hard. Okay. Let me back now. <laughs> you know oh, where those dwarf good. sunflowers tony would look good on your plot is right down the side of your polytunnel mm -hmm. yes that would be lovely. because they would they would be there all summer for mm -hmm. you Mm -hmm. And you don't need to worry about them arguing with your tomatoes anymore. Exactly. They're the tomato, yeah, they're mm -hmm. not even in the ground. So just mm -hmm. next to your hairy balls. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, good. Gotta have Sight some be, of those. Slightly be covered in hairy balls. <laughs> I kind of believe that someone's called a flower that. And Audrey's face when she mentioned it was just a straight poker face. <laughs> Did you not realize you're talking to like three immature men here? You know? Well, when I looked at um, JB, I was like, you're 12 years old. Oh yeah, I, I really felt like I was back in school. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I really did grow out last year for potty mouth. Because I thought that would be a really good conversation starter. <laughs> we'll have to do another special. Do you know what I mean? I've, I've got the bloody, the, the low, you know what I mean? I've got the mm. picture there. So we'll have to have another. Use it again. Oh, look at yes. that. You do. Yes. Yes, wow. all AI, Audrey, generate AI generated there. So I've ripped. It's been ripped from some poor artist, unfortunately. <laughs> some poor AI. starving artist. Yes. Stuff is now on AI. I'm you. I'm even using AI for me titles on me on me things. Oh, nobody would ever have guessed, Tony. Me, yes, <laughs> going all right. <laughs> going all right. It's a. It's actually a video hook generator. For a one for a better description, mm. Mm. very fancy. Well, I've really enjoyed this. It's just like being honestly, it's a whole like, new world, isn't it? It's been good, way, it is. It, it's like way out of me, not comfort zone, but way out of me spectrum of you know what I'm used to. You know what I mean? So, I'm I'm quite itching to, to, to try some. Do you know what I mean? To get not obviously, no, yeah, like Sophie's a hundred nods, <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> Yeah, silly numbers. <laughs> yeah. I I always think it's particularly... I, wanna... I was going to say. I was just like... going to disclaim. I was going to disclaim quickly because I know what people will say. So don't do it. Don't do all the number. Like don't sow that many. Don't worry. I won't. I won't. Okay. Don't. don't <laughs> I just want to put that out there. Please go ahead and sow them, Tony. I'm sorry, <laughs> Sophie. You go ahead and sow them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So don't let anybody yeah, do it. Might as well sow them. You know what I mean. <laughs> 
If and you've, you've got the bigger, and... you've got a like a huge allotment so off. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Well, you don't have to grow, yeah. you know, 50 of each one. You can grow a few and see what you like. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm, I'm thinking. Totally, Just a few, I'm totally a few of many. That. Yeah. Totally with that. Well, we'll wrap this up now. It's been lovely. Thank you very much, all of you, for kind of jumping on this time as well and, you know, all getting together. It's just been a pleasure. Audrey, where can we find you on YouTube? At Real Food Comes Dirty. There you go. Do pop over there and keep an eye because Audrey's, like you say, the queen mother of the flowers there and your database website, Audrey, about with that, you know what I mean? It'll be fantastically updated. Well, and I got, I've got i got my new stuff coming up now on the website. So there you, there you go. it's all up to date. So lovely. Sophie, Get there. where can we find you on YouTube? You can occasionally find me at the enrollment <laughs> <laughs> yes please every month know. or so <laughs> every, yeah well, 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 once, twice a month yeah you know I mean? yeah give and take <laughs> thank you jess where can we find you uh on plot 37 there we go wild and free on <laughs> well, man <laughs> wants to tame it back you know what I mean? <laughs> mark sir where where in the north can we find mark's allotment plot that's it. You'll find me Mox <laughs> allotment plot now available in 4K. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, yes, with your new, yes, your new, new pocket camera. Three. Yeah. Are you, are you still enjoying it? Are you still? It's brilliant. Honestly, what a piece of kit. It is mm. absolutely fantastic. Nice. Waiting for yeah. the lad next door to you to bloody get it's rid of this old thing. You and out day. time, isn't it? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and JB, where, where can we find you, sir? You can find me at Naturally JB on YouTube and Instagram. There we go. Building greenhouses for a hobby. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, everyone, big, huge thank you. Thank you for coming. It's been a pleasure and something I've really enjoyed this time. And again, we'll, we'll try and get this team, flower team back, you know what I mean, and do this all over again sometime. Look after yourselves. Thanks, so. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.